What's up guys? Just making a quick video about the Phantom 85 ring catching issue that people have been having and I just realized I'm having. So it, it wasn't anything enough to blow up my motor. Like I blew it up the original time when because this was a Gen 1 Phantom that had the bushing. So I uh that blew. So I had to replace the whole crankshaft and I got the upgraded Gen 2 bushing from uh, the company that, that sells them. And I was back and going. I used a uh, MS380 piston, which is what a lot of people were recommending, the MS380 chainsaw piston. This is basically the same and the uh, you couldn't buy the Phantom 85 pistons separately and I'm not sure if you can today, but back a year ago you couldn't. So side by side, they're very similar. I just had to machine a little bit off the top to make the compression height from the pin to the, the top of the crown the same. But I, I, I think other people were just adding extra base gaskets to, uh, to fix that problem. So yeah, otherwise they're the same. I just made a little window. But um, I tore it down to port it and I saw, I looked at this one port one transfer port. So the other transfer port looks perfect. And the one on the right side, the right side while it's mounted on the bike, it looks like the, the ring is catching on the, the nick sill or chrome plating and peeling it up slightly at the edge of the port. And you see that line there, that, that grayish line? That's where the, uh, the piston ring end gap is. So basically like the pro part of basically the main issue that has been causing everybody's ring catching issues, which I'm sure they know, I'm just I'm just restating, is um that the locating pins for the end gaps on these pistons, whether it be the Phantom 85 original piston, obviously people were having problems with, with ring catching, even the MS380 piston has the same issues and the MS440 which I'll get to in a moment so yeah I I, I only noticed because um, I wasn't examining the cylinder right off the bat but I did look at the piston just for scoring and you can maybe the flashlight isn't the best to show but you can see that the one ring end is square as it should be on the left and the one on the right is sort of rounded over so basically this end gap and the, this rightmost half of the ring is corresponding right with the edge of that port so every time it goes past it just sort of gets caught a little bit and makes a little takes out a, a little bit more plating every time so it's uh the port roof used to be sort of slanted, I suppose, and now it's flat because you see how it's uh, sort of taken out a triangular section. But that's bad because now that it's taken out sort of the corner, I think it's going to start taking out chunks in the center of the port rather than just shavings on the edge, right? So it, it's, it's too bad. I guess it's really hard to avoid with the Phantom 85 because... The end gap has to be somewhere that vertically doesn't pass over any ports. Like, that's how it's supposed to be. So there's not much room in the Phantom 85 to do it. It's got to be... They do the one. It has to be between the very edge of the top exit of the transfer port here and here. So they're working with, like, a 7 millimeter or 6 millimeter wide... Uh, you know, uh, line, vertical line with only like a five, a five to seven millimeter width that they can locate the end gaps. And, but you see, I was having no issues on the other port, but only on the one. So I think the fact that I had the issue, sorry, I'm holding this backwards. I think the fact that it had the issue only on one side really just came down to the uh, the sloppiness in the mounting studs, right? Like you can you can wiggle this, rotate it slightly. So 
and you know the threads on these aren't very good they're always sort of lopsided and whatever so I think it was just a very like I think what caused my issue especially being only on the one port was that it was just slightly rotated one way or the other and since the the ring end gaps only had such small uh vertical areas that they could run on either side that the one went right crossed right into the port and then the one half of the ring was sort of touching touching right off on the corner every time it went up and down and that's why it has the rounded over appearance so i took this apart and i was planning on putting in an ms440 aka 044 piston because you could buy these and it's hard to find but um the, the other channel um ERT, Ellis Racing Team. He's uh, he's the one who put me onto these. I uh, I never knew where to buy them, but he showed us how. So, thanks. And uh, the advantage of this over the MS380 or the regular MS440 is that this particular one, this particular version of MS440 piston has a 10 millimeter pin which is rare, it's hard to find. But because of the 10 millimeter pin, I can run a normal size motorized bicycle bearing, needle bearing, and not have to use the bushing. Because these 12 millimeter pistons, with the 12 millimeter pins, the Gen 1s and the Gen 2s, and the MS380 that I'm using because of that reason, are required to use bushings. So now I can use a bearing that'll last relatively forever in comparison to these bushings that have a iffy surface life so that that i thought i was sorted and i was ready to put it back together after porting it with this piston but nope because if you look at the uh the locating pin locations right here we're going to compare the uh the ms440 or the 044 to the stock Phantom 85. You can see here to there and there to there. You can see they're even wider. They're, they're farther apart, which means that they're closer to the transfer ports, which is our issue. Our issue wasn't that they're too close to the intake port. The issue, I think, with most people is that the end gaps are too close to the transfer ports. So that's bad. This will, we already had an issue with uh, ring catching. And this one had, this Phantom 85 piston, which I took out because of the bearing reason, was also catching, but I didn't notice. And actually, I just noticed, I just realized this now, but it was catching on the left side instead of the right side, like my other one. So it really does come down to a minor change in where this is positioned when it's bolted down, if it's twisted a little bit. Because this one now was wearing on the opposite side. It was wearing on the left. And I'm trying to get this camera to focus. But the ring end gap is the one, you see the, the right side of it is super worn down and rounded over compared to the left. So that was absolutely catching on a port, catching on the transfer port. I just didn't realize. So Sock Phantom 85, unless they've uh, basically modified, like improved their pistons for the, uh, the generation three, maybe this isn't a problem, but the generation one like I have, or the gen two that just has the uh, bushing change, but I don't think anything else, they'll all have this risk of uh, the ring cr crossing over into the transfer port area. My, uh, my old plan of putting on the uh, 10 millimeter pin piston out of the still MS440, the 044, is no long, is might might not be an option for me anymore because of that. And if we can 
if we compare to the uh, MS380 piston, which is the one I was using, it's, uh, it's also looking at the position of the locating pins slightly farther apart than the, uh, the Phantom 85 original. So the Phantom 85 original actually has the least risk compared to the other ones you can put in being the, uh, the MS380 and the, M and the MS440 slash 044. So, um, I'm only going to put this motor in a trail bike for now because I, I don't, I'm, everybody knows now the Phantom 85s, they don't lat they've got so many issues you know, little just flaws like this, I guess, like little design flaws that are, it's, it's, it's not worth investing huge time and money into. So I'm going to port it and do, do some fun stuff to it, but put it back on a bike once and for good. And after that, if it blows, that's it for the Phantom 85s for me, because I've got other stuff to worry about, like better motors to build, less more reliable motors to build. So this is gonna go on a trail bike, wrapping up and getting back on topic. So what I'm gonna do about this ring catching issue when I, when I put the motor back together is I'm gonna remove the bottom ring. Lots of motors run one ring, it's okay. So remove that. We now have half the risk of ring catching. I'll leave the other one. And then what I'll do is I think I'm gonna drill these cylinder stud holes out just slightly to allow a bit more um, allow me a bit more wiggly room when I install it and then I'm going to rotate it this way as far as it goes and then bolt it like that so that in that like if I do it that way now there will only be one more ring gap to worry about and I'm going to rotate the piston slightly, or sorry, rotate the cylinder slightly to move the gap close or farther away from the transfer port, closer to the intake port. So rather than being, being here, you can see the black line where it corresponded, like right on the raggedy edge. I'm going to rotate the cylinder just a couple degrees. I'm just going to try to by eye so that hopefully the ring end gap lines up more like here, a couple millime millimeters closer to the intake. And hopefully, if I disassemble the motor after and uh, look at the wear pattern, I should be able to tell if I've got the ring end gap lined up in the correct spot where it's not gonna get caught on anything. So yeah, that's my plan. One ring and then drill out the holes slightly so that the cylinder can wiggle slightly on the studs and then rotate it slightly in the clockwise direction to move this left end gap away from the left transfer port. And that'll be it. We'll only have one ring to worry about. And yeah, if that fails, then there's nothing else I can do. Even if I moved the pin like if I move this locating pin, if I made a new one, put it in the center or something, then it's going to be going directly over the intake port, which that's obviously very risky. But I mean, so I think actually some motors do do that. But lower RPM motors with thick rings, they'll, uh, they're more loosey-goosey when it comes to end gaps running over ports like there are motors that have for example motors that have multiple small exhaust ports like little old lawn boys and two-stroke uh, lawnmower motors and stuff like that some of those wouldn't even have a pin a locating pin on the piston they'd let the ring rotate wherever it wants because none of the ports were particularly large enough for it to get caught so yeah, I don't know. I could put a bit of, this is all hypothetical. I'm probably not going to do this. If it blows once more, I'm, I'm going to trash it because there's no way I'm buying a whole new Phantom 85 just to get the cylinder out of it. But let's say that my, my, uh, my 
What I've come up with with doing the one ring and rotating it still wasn't a fix. Maybe I could put the ring end gap here by putting in a new pin right in the center where it would line up with the intake port. And then just use a little bit of JB Weld here, sort of a hump to, uh, to keep this covered up when the cylinder is at bottom dead center to keep the ring end gap from uh, splaying outwards into the port. But yeah, I think that's enough rambling for now. So yeah, if anybody else has any uh, knowledge about the Phantom 85 issues, the ring end gap issue, if they've fixed it with the newer motors, love to hear it. But yeah, this is, this is my plans for now. See ya.